get better and better every time we get together. We get better and better and we move on down to the next game. Welcome to the Socceroos Insider, a special look for Socceroos fans behind the scenes of the Socceroos campaign over in Kuwait. Joining me for this edition, Scott Jamison, cap number 522. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Pleasure, Dapis. Thank you. You remember me. that, I'm sure, like it was yesterday. A debut against uh, Indonesia in Jakarta. I do. I don't necessarily remember the number, um, which you've reminded me kindly of, but uh, yeah, the debut was something that uh, I'll never forget. Uh, Indonesia. I think there was a fair few fans there too. So um, something that will stick in the memory for a long time and one that will be able to get told to the, the kids and the grandkids. Coming up on tonight's show, Scott, we're going to speak to one of your uh, teammates, Jamie McLaren. Jackson Irvine also joining us. Uh, extra special he was, Jackson Irvine, wasn't he? Was, superb. Uh, I guess him carrying on from his good six months with Hibbs, uh, being the experienced midfielder without Rogic and Moy there, um, he's had to step up and... Going off the first game, it's, it's looking good for us Socceroo fans. Yeah, a little quiz too coming up. Uh, Jamie McLaren v Scott Jemison. We'll find out who knows each other best. That's coming up a little bit later in the Socceroos Insider. Let's have a look at uh, the result from our previous game. Obviously, a really strong start, Scott, uh, against Kuwait. 3-0. Especially impressive given the boys had uh, just arrived a few days earlier and to acclimatise to the conditions over there, I thought they were great. Yeah, without a doubt. I think if you look at the group, Kuwait are probably the strongest team. They've been together for a while, um, obviously under the, the, the guidance of, of Andres Carrasco, who was at the Western Sydney Wonders when I was there. So he knew a lot about the Australian football, but the performance was, was very good. Um, the result was very good. And it's a good base now for us to, to kick on in the next few games. All right, let's uh, take a little closer look now at uh, Jackson Irvine and his performance uh, in that game against Kuwait. He was given a new responsibility, wasn't he? Some of those experienced players uh, you touched on missing from this 11, and he really stood up. He did. Like I said before, no Moy, no Rogic. Um, you know, Jackson's been around the national team for a while now, so I guess a lot of the emphasis um, would be placed on him. And, and in this is, game, yeah, here he is taking the ball, picking up positions uh, in there. But he started next to James Holland uh, in that defensive role. But throughout the game, you, you saw him getting forward. Um, his strength being box to box football. So winning the ball again there, definitely breaking things up in the defensive side and, and trying to win it back as, as soon as possible. So you know, to have him in the team. Uh, was key and then obviously this moment here um, you know he'll touch on later about um, his uh, his eagerness to get in the goals and tap-ins but um, you know for, for him to do that it's a great uh, it's a great characteristic to, to think the keeper might save it. Yeah we will ask him about that but that showed great awareness from uh, his Hibs teammate perhaps he didn't have a lot of faith in him but he made the run we'll see it from this angle here making that run and anticipating perhaps a rebound well I'm sure Martin Ball is not too happy about uh, missing the penalty but uh, like I said um, I guess as a play you've got to expect the unexpected uh, and Jackson being Jackson um, he's followed it up and I don't know whether in Hibs training that they haven't worked on uh, penalties but maybe he thought Martin would miss talk to us about the way you, you noticed the Socceroos and how they uh, match up and, and line up in that midfield and, and the role he's playing because he's breaking up play but he's also looks like he's got a free reign. You do, you, you do have the box to box element with, with him. Uh, like I touched on, James Holland being the, the traditional six and the holding, but you also have Aiden Hustich who is the number 10. But with Jackson, you know, does, does both sides of, of the game. Um, a box to box midfielder has great legs to get up and down and will be key in this campaign because of the games coming thick and fast. But you'll see here. Uh, getting in position to intercept the ball uh, and then play forward to start a, an attack for our team. Um, it'll be very key. Yeah, you could see his communication too. He's uh, out there talking to uh, he, all of his teammates and, and taking on that responsibility. Well, I mean, you look at the midfielders picked uh, a lot of young, young ones um, and there's a lot of responsibility placed on him. No Moy, no Rogic. Uh, so a lot of leadership you know, in the game would be placed on, on him himself. You know, also boys like, uh, you know, well, Trent Sainsbury didn't play, but a lot of these boys who have been around the camp for a while uh, will be stepping up. Yeah, one of the future leaders, I reckon, uh, of the Socceroos, uh, Jackson Irvine. So Jackson Irvine's been good enough to join us from Kuwait. Jacko, thanks for joining us. A fantastic start. Uh, you must be really pleased, with especially the way you played uh, in that game. Yeah, unbelievably. Uh, pleased with the way the opening game's gone for us. Um, couldn't have asked for a better start. I think the performance levels and um, the attitude of everybody, as well as you know, settling back into that cohesion of playing together after such a big break, couldn't have couldn't have gone any better. But 
Uh, plenty more to come, and we're going to obviously grow into it the, the longer this camp goes on. Jackson, your role last game, uh, it looked like you started next to James Holland, but you had that freedom to, to get forward box to box. What was Arnie's instructions for you? Yeah, very similar to, to the way you've just put it there. Um, obviously, naturally, Dutchie's probably more of, of the, the six, the kind of sitting midfielder where myself likes to go kind of box to box and join in, in the attacks. And I had the freedom to do that when I recognised the spaces were there. So, um, you know, we found a really good balance. Um, I've, you know, we've never played beside each other in the middle of the park before, but, um, you know, we're both experienced enough now to, to be able to, um, you know, coach each other and, and uh, settle into that very quickly. And I thought we had a really, really good balance and um, very comfortable playing in there together. It's been such a long time since we've seen a lot of you play for the Socceroos. Uh, take us through the last two years. It's almost been two years since we've seen you in that Socceroos jersey. Obviously, a lot's changed for you at Clubland. Uh, obviously, you played at Hull, had mm. a bit of a break. But at that time, did you need the break? I know that when you played at Hull, you, you had almost 60 games that year. It was an extraordinary workload for you. Um, no, I definitely wouldn't have taken the break if it was if it was a uh, if it was up to me. But um, listen, yeah, you know, for myself personally, looking back on the last um, 18 months, two years, and the kind of everything I've I've gone through in a foot from a football perspective to to get back to to starting for the national team and being involved, and after that kind of 10 month layoff, um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, kind of it made it a little bit more of an emotional experience being back in, in, in the Socceroos jersey and being back in the squad after, you know, there was times during that 10 months where you start to, you know, have serious doubts about, you know, where, where you're at in your career and, and, and the way things are going. So to be able to build back to, to this level for myself personally, it's been, um, yeah, an unbelievably pleasing thing and being back amongst the boys and, um, yeah, just settling back in straight away after, as I say, what was challenging Period. And in terms of the break, um, I definitely didn't need the break, but I think it will be something that potentially could serve me well in the years to come. I had played you know, kind of five, six years have gone, you know, 50 game seasons almost back to back. And, um, you know, although I wouldn't, as I say, I wouldn't have actively chosen to have that break. I think maybe in the long run, it could be something that, that I benefit from. And just adding on to Zappa's questions there, Jackson, um, your contract's up with Hibs. Uh, I'm sure you don't want another break. Uh, now, I know you're there with the Socceroos, but in the background, I'm sure people are working. Have you got any information about what your next uh, guest destination or move could be? No, nah, nothing at the moment. Um, I'm fully focused on, on being in, in this camp and focusing on these three games to come. Um, you know, the future will kind of take care of itself. There's conversations, um, you know, still happening with Hibs and, and um, you know, we're, we're comfortable with where we're at at the moment. I'm not in a, in a rush to kind of make a decision, especially while I'm in here and We've got such three such important games, especially in the next kind of ten days, two weeks, and um, you know we'll, I'll deal with my domestic, you know, um, club future, you know, at the end of this camp. Before we uh, you take us on a tour, you're going to take us a little bit uh, on a, an inside tour of where you're at at the moment. Uh, that goal, talk us through it. Uh, it, it. Obviously, the quickest to react. You, you, you looked like you were ready to make that run. Did you have no confidence in your Hibs teammate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, if, if any of the Hibs boys uh, uh, ever see this, they'll know that I'm obsessed with, with rebounds. You know, we, when we do shooting drills at training. When I was younger, I played um, at Kilmarnock with a guy called Chris Boyd. And um, I've said it in interviews before, and he used to, we used to do shooting drills. And if someone had a shot and it rebounded and you know, they didn't finish it, he would come charging out of the queue you know, if he was waiting to have a shot and just go and smash it in the back of the net. He just loved scoring rebounds, loved constantly hitting the back of the net. So I'm always... Um, nothing makes me happier than when someone scores a goal off a rebound from following in. So I was quite pleased with myself that even though obviously I would have loved Martin to score his penalty, but um, no, I'm, I'm buzzing that my uh, something that I'm always on other boys attacking boys about kind of came fell to me eventually. Probably the easiest goal I'll ever score. Fantastic. Well, you had to read it. Now, Scott, you've been in uh, Socceroos camps before. I think uh, you're the right person to take us on this tour with uh, with Jacko. Yeah. I guess first question would be, is there any food left after Vuka gets to the buffet? <laughs> I think that's the most important question. Yeah, there's a few lads that, that uh, you know, take full advantage of the, you know, as many plates as you want system. <laughs> Matty Ryan is, uh, can, can definitely tuck his food away as well, that's for sure. You know, so um, no, there's a few lads that, that take full advantage, that's, there's no doubt about that. All right, we've got a special setup where I think you've got a roaming uh, camera 
with you and uh, you're going to take us a, a little bit inside the Socceroos camp on the Socceroos Insider. Yeah. So uh, go for it. Well, yeah, this, this, is co this is COVID world. We have been basically put in every single room has become the same massive room. We've got a meal room. This is, this is our makeshift gym, which consists of some free weights, some, you know, Swiss ball stuff. And generally just most of the boys doing floor work because we have been quite heavily constricted. We've got some equipment at the back as well. Sorry, what, what, what plays are on the beach weights there with the dumbbells and the bench press there, mate? I'm never in the gym, so I wouldn't know, <laughs> mate. I'll have, you'll have to ask someone that actually, actually uses it. This is where most of the workouts actually done though, on the table tennis table. I think I've seen at least double the time spent here than on the, than on, in the gym. Who's winning, Riley? This is right, right, these two are inseparable, by the way. I don't think I've seen them more than 10 feet apart in the last two weeks. Riley McGree and Harry Sutar, is it? Harry Suda, H is, we've been calling H Marin Cilic on the table tennis table because he just reaches everything, he's, he's too big. <laughs> Has Curtis Good had a go at the table tennis? Because he's pretty good. He is pretty good. I used to play, um, or some people will know that me and Kirk grew up together. Me and Kirk have known each other since we were about 10 years old. So I used to play with Kirk when we were younger and he's always been unbelievable at table tennis. I haven't seen him on there yet, to be honest. Um, well, I've got to let you know. His room. I've got to let you know. Prior to him leaving for the uh, Socceroos camp, that's all he talked about was was your relationship and how you were best mates. So I can certainly imagine the uh, the greeting Curtis gave you because <laughs> um, it was something that he didn't stop talking about, pal. That's for sure. No, uh, that's quite funny because um, as soon as I saw his name and like the you know the call ups and the group chat and everything, I was like, I guarantee you, I won't even hear from him. I'll just see him in here. I've not seen him in three or four years or something like that. And he'll just turn up and just be like, oh, hey, mate, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. And that's exactly how it went as well. But we're both, we're both the same. We're notoriously, notoriously hopeless. A few boys still eating breakfast, but this is the, we've got, we're absolutely spoiled rotten on the food front. We've got choices coming out of our ears with food all across the board. Um, with the tables, who's on your table eating? My table, we've got um, most of the boys on my table, the lads from my Ollie Roos kind of group. We have me and Jamie, Jamie McLaren, Adam Taggart, Curtis, and Kenny Dougal. Um, so we, we all played together in the under 23s and some of us even like for under 20s and obviously Macca and Curtis I've known since we were, since we were kids as well. Obviously um, we played Vic Schoolboys together at under 11s. Um, so we've known each other a very long time. It's actually funny Jackson says that because Curtis and Mac have always talked about the Green Gully days, was it? I believe Green Gully, the rivalries between yourselves? Yeah, yeah, no, the, that, was, that was it. Jamie on his, uh, at Green Gully on the northern side and me and Curtis played on the other side of town. So, um, but we came together and played when we used to play, um, yeah, in, like the, in the state leagues and then obviously later on when we played Young Socceroos and Ollie Roos as well. So, um, no, it's funny. It's amazing that the three of us are all in here together after kind of we've been through that kind of journey all the way through um, different paths. Obviously Jamie being at Blackburn and myself at Celtic and Curtis at Newcastle and we've kind of all um, had similar but individual in their own way and then the fact that we're all in a Socceroos camp together is a pretty cool story considering um, you know where we've been from such a young age so there's the man just there listening to every word I say and pretending it's not. <laughs> Great to have you uh, give us that tour. J Jacko, and uh, did you pack the guitar before we let you go? Oh, I was, I was actually thinking about it when obviously we heard that the restrictions were going to be quite tight on what we're allowed to do around the place. I did think about bringing the guitar out, but I didn't want to torture the, um, the boys with the jet lag by strumming away too loud in, in my room. So I thought I'd, I'd spare, them, spare them that torture. So no, I kept, it, I kept it at home. Thanks for joining us, mate, and all the best for the rest of the tournament. No worries, guys. Thanks, nice mate. to see you. We're back up at the screen. Scott, Chinese Taipei, our opponent tomorrow morning. 7-1 last time away from home. Is scoring early the catalyst, the key to starting well? Certainly is, Sappers. I think... We saw last game with a 7-1 result, a lot of opportunities were created, a lot of goals scored. So coming into this game, 
that'll be on Graham Arnold's mind. Uh, lots of goals and opportunities for the, the Taggarts, the Dukes, the McLaren to really fill their boots. Uh, and I think we we'll definitely see in this game a, a more attacking, I guess, formation without maybe the two holders and going forward and trying to get fullbacks overloading, wingers getting balls into the box and, and goals for the boys. You make a good point about the fullbacks. You see in these highlights, uh, Brad Smith was playing at left back. Uh, he set up that one. Ryan Grant was really getting forward as well. You see him here making a really good run and knocking that ball forward for Jackson Irvine. Well, that's the key. I guess when you come up against teams that you know really do drop deep, uh, making the pitch as wide as possible, having the overlap of, of the fullbacks helps. Uh, stretching their defence. We'll see in a little bit with the defence stretched. Jamie McLaren on the shoulders, running off shoulders creating space. So we see here, Hustich turns McLaren on the shoulder, um, and with that, that's created by the fullbacks and the width of the wingers. So it'll definitely be key tomorrow morning. Yeah, let's uh, have a look at that man, Jamie McLaren. Uh, he is our player to watch in the Socceroos Insider. We pumped up Aidan Hustich last uh, game, so and he had a man, man of the match performance. I wonder whether Jamie McLaren can do the same. I'm sure he'll come back into the starting eleven. He only arrived a couple of days before the first game, so we expect him to start. Well, we've certainly seen um, the glowing praise from Graham Arnold, so you definitely do th think he'll figure. Um, having scored uh, already against this team, you know, Jamie will definitely be excited to, to take on him. This is against Nepal. He scored a hat-trick here, uh, one with each leg yeah. and, and a header too. And uh, he comes in here and does a fantastic job. Well, I think the key here is he doesn't receive the first ball. It's on the second ball there. And I guess a, a natural striker with his instincts, um, he's always aware, always on the go. So um, no doubt this game, whether it's him, Taggart, or like I said, or Duke, the opportunities will be there and it'll be up to them to, to take him. And no problem with the, the amount of time he's had there to acclimatise. He'll be ready to hit the ground running. I think so, Zappers. I think you know you're looking at um, you know, this day and age. The professionalism of each player uh, is second to none. And and knowing this guy very well, um, he will be ready, ready to go. So and standing on the shoulders of his defenders, he's so good at that. We've seen him do that in the A League, and he received a terrific ball from Hustich there. Oh, it's a key. I think it's a credit to him. Um, definitely being on the shoulder, knowing the space is in behind. It's hard for defenders to know. Uh, where he is when they're not on the in front of you, they're on the shoulder. So I th definitely think you'll see more of that um, and then you'll def definitely see more goals. All right, we look forward to speaking to Jamie McLaren right after this. It's an honour to, uh, to present these uh, three caps to the players. One moment that you will never forget is your international debut for Australia. Mine was back in 1991. Riley wasn't even born then. And I played against Czechoslovakia on a rain-soaked pitch. So that's the one thing that I can remember. There's other games I can't remember, but for the three boys who played last night, they'll remember it was a World Cup qualifier where we got three points and we, you know, on the way to our, uh, our journey. So I would like to uh, call on the first one, Fran. <laughs> Cap 607. 608, Kenny Dougal. Congratulations. And 609, Riley McGrew. Jamie McLaren comes from the A-League in red hot form into Socceroos camp. Thanks for joining us, Jamie. You've been there a few days now. How's it all going with you? Yeah, it's really good. It's, uh, it's nice to be back in camp. Um, a long time between drinks, obviously 18 months of, of no international football has been difficult, but um, we're here now, it's uh, as if we haven't been away. And uh, like I said, a great three points the other night and we just want to carry that into the next three games. Jay, I think firstly, uh, the most important question is, um, do you miss me? Uh, I do, brother. You know, it's uh, one of those things I have to wake up to uh, seeing you in the morning, but uh, I do miss you, mate. It's, Definitely one of those faces that uh, you know you do miss. Good man. Um, in all seriousness, uh, obviously you just arrived in camp. Uh, you missed the first game. Uh, with the second game coming up, uh, are you available to play? Uh, and second, will you score? Yeah, Jamo. Uh, obviously missing the first game. Uh, I was on the bench. Uh, just arrived probably a little bit too late. But uh, the boys that had already acclimatised to the camp in Dubai, so um, uh, they got a fantastic result. Got us over the line and scored some good goals. So. Um, it was a joy to watch, but uh, you know, moving forward to, to the Taipei game, um, I came off the bench last time and scored against them. So, you know me, Jamo, I, uh, I aim to score every game, and uh, 
you know, like I said, it's, it's going into these games with full of confidence and, and that's what I am at the moment. And um, a lot of boys in camp have had very good seasons and uh, yeah, we just look to carry on. Tell us a little bit about your role. Has it changed at all much since you were last in camp? Has uh, Arnie tweaked anything or is it very much similar, similar setup? Oh, look, I, I'm, I'm a striker zapper. You know, you, you wouldn't see me anywhere else on the field. I think Jamo knows that quite well. But yeah, I, I just come in to, to provide what I can. You know, everybody brings something unique to this to this group, and um, you know, I like to think that I bring goals to this to this squad. And um, you know, there's many boys who in the in the front third have had fantastic seasons as well. So, um, and boys have won trophies as well. So, coming into camp full of confidence, a lot of boys have, have done a lot of good things this season, and um, you know, you'll find me in the box. Um, yeah, in coming games. I mean, we've talked about it privately, but uh, I think it's important. I mean, Graham Arnold's publicly come out and supported you um, a few times now. For you, how does that make you feel knowing the manager's got full trust in you and confidence in you? It's huge. I think every player, you know, you want to have a very good relationship with, with your manager. And um, the boss here has been great, not only to me, but to, to all the boys and his man management side of things, making sure every player in the squad feels feels welcome and feels you know, they're, like they're part of it as if we're a family and um, I'm pretty, pretty lucky that I've got it both at club level and, and country to have two, two managers who, who really believe in me and who back me and um, I think you know, you've seen that if you back me then I'll do everything I can to produce and um, work tirelessly for those managers and, and work tirelessly for my teammates so um, when you're in a good place with, with your coaching staff it's always great. It's been a pretty eventful weeks for a couple of weeks for you, hasn't it? Uh, a League, you've won the the Premier's Plate, you've won the Golden Boot. You were supposed to get married last week on Saturday, and now you're in Kuwait. How do you sum up what's happened in the last couple of weeks? An absolute roller coaster, Zappers. Um, you know, it was winning the Premier's Plate was was something that, you know, I can speak on behalf of Jamo as well. Is the first trophy we ever had at club level, so it was nice to do it with him. So, um, the Golden Boot. Look, at the start of the season, you always set sights on those things, but coming into this season, I genuinely had a sight on winning trophies as a team and as a collective, and at Melbourne City, that was a, a, a big aim of ours, and uh, we've done that. Um, that's objective one, and objective two is obviously getting to the grand final and winning that. But um, aside from that, golden boot, my best ever tally in front of goal, um, and I look to build on that and um, come into camp here and, and try and score more goals for my country, which is, uh, is an amazing feeling. I know what it's like, and. Um, you, you can't really top it. So other than that, the flip side of that with uh, my partner and, and us not getting married, it's um, the second time round, but you know, good things happen in threes and um, I believe that uh, the next time we try, uh, we will get married. Also, for, also, did you get an invite to the wedding? Did you get an invite? I did, yeah. Yeah, no, I did. So I gave him money and now I want a refund. That. Um, I gave him a lot of money. Uh, for me, Jay, just quickly, I, I think um, it's important to touch on, I mean, confidence comes from scoring goals, but this is obviously a, a different level. Do you take that confidence from scoring uh, with your club into the, the international scene or I guess do you kind of reset um, knowing that this is a, an international game? No, look, I, I carry on. You know, I carry on and um, doing work with Rene who, uh, you know, works on finishing after training and, um, and I believe that if I can just keep doing the things that I was doing this season, you know, post-training on my extras, um, that I'll go into games full of, full of confidence. and. You know, it's a little bit of, of the same because, you know, Melbourne City, we had a lot of the ball, we, we dominate possession, we create chances, and that's the same here in the Socceroos, you know, so I've got to put myself in the best, best position possible, make sure I'm in and around the box um, and not drift out too many areas where the, where the boys can't find me. And, um, you know, if selected, then I'll put myself in those great areas to, to hit the back of the net because at the end of the day, that's my job. I get paid to, to score goals and, and there's no greater feeling in the world and in football than, um, than scoring a goal. So. Um, that's what I love doing, Jamo, you know that. So, um, yeah, I just look forward to these games and, and can't wait to put the green and gold back on. All right, well, that's the serious stuff out the way. Now we're going to test you both. We're running a, a quiz. The uh, Socceroos who are based back here have got the edge. Uh, Sasha Olganovsky won the first quiz. Uh, Danny Vukovic missing out. So let's see if uh, Damien McLaren can get one back for the Socceroos who are over there at the moment. So we're going to ask you three questions each, boys, and you have to answer them all. All right, and we'll see who gets them right. Okay. All right, so it's, it's, it's a play on how well do you know your teammate, right? Brilliant. So three questions each, and uh, you need to answer them and show us in the screen your answers. All right, so here we go. First question. This is how well do you know Jamie? Yes. When is Jamie's birthday? We want you to both write them down and show us the right answer. All right. All right, let's uh, reveal the answer. Jamie's birthday is... 29th of the 7th, 1993. 
<laughs> what did you give us? 29th of July, 1993. You got it. Yeah, I did. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he went to Wikipedia before it, did he? Uh, <laughs> no did you, comment. No did you comment. Wikipedia it? I didn't give him the question beforehand. <laughs> Who is Jamie's celebrity crush? Oh, that's a good one. I know this. Male, yeah. male, or, male or female, Zappers? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> you tell us. Let's see if uh, Scott knows. Yes, I think, I think we'll get this, yeah. All right, show us the answer. Daphne oh. Joy. No. Oh, come <laughs> on, brother. <laughs> Who is it, Jamie? Well, you haven't even given me a chance to write oh, it down. Oh, he just gave him the answer. <laughs> it wasn't. He, he wasn't going to write it down. So oh. that's, that's one out of two. Last question. What is Jamie's favourite artist? Oh, who easy. is Jamie's favourite artist? Wait, let me just write this down. You guys are going too quick. Can we narrow it down so we kind of have some form of genre? So no, say, no. Oh, okay, no. no it's your show. Got your, it's your got show. It. It's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Reveal your answer. He's got it. The game. Well done. Hey, I know this so came in the back two. of my hand. <laughs> two out of three. All right, Jamie, you need to get all of, all of them right now if you're going to win this one. Right. If Scott wasn't a footballer, what would he be? Let's have a look at uh, your answer, Jamie. Some sort of it. Business owner. Business yeah. owner. So I went with car salesman. So... Um, <laughs> I'm very complimentary of myself. A career this, after but... football. <laughs> yeah, car right. salesman. Zero out of one, Jamie. Next one. What is Scott's favourite playing memory? All right. This has to be. This has to be. Debut for the Socceroos. Come on, brother. It's all about Melbourne City. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Winning the Premier's plate. Well, with that, that's zero out of two. Scott Jamison is the winner. Can I just say something and highlight, I guess, who invests in who in the relationship of this friendship? Um, I think he needs to start investing more in me because I know a lot about him. I know a lot about him. <laughs> Jamie, we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, all the best. We look forward to seeing you hitting the back of the net for the Socceroos in the next few games. Thanks, boys. Jamo, good to see you, mate. Cheers, Jay. Fantastic to see some more insights from the Socceroos camp. I bet you wish you were there, but you've got finals coming up. So all the best for the finals as well, Scott. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me. And a prediction before we let you go. Look, Sash got it right last time, so I guess the pressure's on me. Um, I'm going to go with a 5-0. I think we'll, we'll get a fair few goals and, and we won't concede. Um, and I'm going to even put my, my neck on the line and, and put a McLaren two goals. All right, uh, we hope you're all right. Don't forget you can catch all the action on Fox Sports, KO, My Football App and ABC TV. And as we say goodbye, we had some fun the other morning watching the Socceroos on Zoom. It's a Socceroos watch party. Enjoy and thanks for joining us. Quick on his feet, but it's got that power in the air as well. Rustich gliding in, playing for the penalty and earns it. Martin Boyle has a glance, and the keeper yeah. keeps it out. Here comes Jackson Irvine yeah. to smash it home. <laughs> and he goes for goal, Aiden Rustich yeah. sneaks Whoa. it in. <laughs> Unbelievable.